All right, what's up, everybody? It's Marquez here, a.k.a. MKBHD, here along with my co-host for Waveform, Andrew Manganelli. What's up, everyone? All right, so it's, it's finally here. We've uh, sort of teased this uh, sort of unintentionally, but we've teased it for a while. Yeah. It's been in the works, and we wanted to do it right. But I'm finally excited to say we're launching a podcast. And you know what a podcast is already. It's audio. Uh, this is episode one, and uh, it sort of feels good to get started. Yeah, it feels really good. Uh, we've we've been talking about this for a long time. I'd say like the last six months has been like we've been ready to really yeah. shoot it. Um, so it's really exciting to do this. I, I'm pretty pumped. I listened to Africa by Toto like four times on my way here to <laughs> get what gets you up. pumped up. That's what gets me pumped up. Okay. So, okay. So we're ready, I think. Okay. So before I guess before we get into the main topics, because we're going to have topics and it's sort of like a chat show of a whole bunch of t- tech things. Let's just talk for a second about what waveform is because there's a bunch of tech podcasts already there's a bunch of youtuber podcasts already so so i'll just talk about what waveform is for a second so for everyone who's a new listener which is everyone uh a podcast so we've had the the youtube channel the mkbhd channel just at nine million subscribers by the way shout out to everyone who is subscribed thank you um i think the best way to describe this podcast is a combination of uh, my extra thoughts and feelings on the gadgets, on the tech, and then also uh, a lot of behind the scenes. So we'll have like conversations around the studio about uh, things like while we're shooting videos, or we'll might like we come into work a little bit early and like kind of rant about something and like well, you know that would have done pretty great actually as yeah, a podcast. I, I wish we recorded that. That's... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's the sort of thing that's going to show up, and then we'll also have. I think a little bit of an interview style thing. They're not super formal interviews, but I feel like we can have YouTubers on. We can have people in tech business on, Mm -hmm. and it all sort of flows uh, into one place. So we just have a place to share it now. Yeah, uh, and non-formal is fun. I mean, videos are pretty concise and everything, and sometimes non-formal is just fun to talk about little things that wouldn't make it into a video, and now we just have plenty of time you probably have a long commute so get ready to listen to a sure a lot of rambling do you listen to podcasts like just during commutes is the main time yeah i'd say like every other thursday i look forward to my commute because i know a new reply all episodes out that and is like a favorite yeah we live in north jersey the traffic is horrific <laughs> um so <laughs> it, it's pretty magical to actually have something that kind of takes your mind off of not moving in front behind a truck for an hour every morning so yeah so I just want to I just want to break down Andrew for a second because it's not just me on the podcast. Andrew, I would call you the the assistant producer, the right hand man in the studio every time I'm in the studio, but also a whole bunch of other interests that are sort of parallel to mine. So you're a gamer much more than I am. Yeah, yeah. For a long time, I've been gaming as long as I can remember. So there's going to be if there's gaming stuff that's in the news or that we're talking about, Andrew's the guy who's going to share with they like what the deal is with the gaming. There's also, we both play Ultimate, so that's something we might talk about on occasion. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, somebody's got a pretty important game coming up this weekend, uh, I think. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, shortly after we record this, I'll be heading to San Jose to play in the semifinals and then hopefully the finals of uh, the AUDL Championship Weekend, which is the Pro Ultimate Frisbee League that we play in. Yep. So, good luck. Thank good you. Luck. Yeah. It's going to be a good weekend. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the format of, uh, of Waveform is... Uh, it's waveform. It's audio. I feel like that was the mm-hmm. best way to name it is to just go straight up simple. The logo is clean, designed by you. Uh, it took a long time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, for something so simple, simple takes time and being a not great. Simple takes the most time. Yeah, I guess. It, it looks painfully simple. I'm sure everyone that looks at it is like, why did that take you a long time? But it yeah. did, but whatever, it's here. Yeah, I'm excited. here we are. It's, it's, it's finally happening. Okay. So I want to start off by introducing a couple of things that I think can be great regularly occurring segments. Number one, I think we're going to do this podcast pretty regularly, and there's going to be videos in between. We can talk about things that happened on YouTube and in videos since the last podcast. Mm-hmm. So that would make, you know, the last video was uh, the Redmi K20 Pro and then the Note 10 impressions. And yep, we're going to yep. dive into Note 10. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's one thing. And then another is just like, things that have happened in the tech world and the news that honestly we we come into the studio and we talk about this news and we'll also have brandon and vin in here all the time and we'll just talk about like oh what tesla's adding a bunch of superchargers to wawa stations that's an awesome like little bit of news and then we'll talk about it for 10 minutes and then nobody we don't really share it or tweet it or anything Mm -hmm. so that's kind of what this will be something that's like 
it's too long to talk about in a tweet, but too short to talk about in a video. Right. And now we have this. We have a, a couple minutes at the start of all of our podcasts where we can just talk about what happened since the last podcast, pretty much. And Yeah. Yeah. So, segue into that. Sure. What has happened the last couple of weeks? Okay, perfect. So, uh, I guess to start it off, we'll just sort of go through the last, like, week or so of small tech, tech bits of news that we've talked about. First thing is actually... Uh, a little bit of self awesome shout out to Philip DeFranco for that self awesome promo, <laughs> whatever he calls it. Uh, just finished shooting Retro Tech season one. Now I don't want to. I can't spoil too much mm-hmm. of it. Like I don't want to tell you. I'll say there are six episodes, right? Yep. You you've seen like a lot of us shooting it around the studio, and I got to see the shooting of a couple of them, and. Right. They're fun. They're a lot of They're fun. They're a lot of fun. There's yeah. some great guests. There's some great YouTubers. There's some great mm-hmm. interviews. And the six pieces of tech that we chose, because, again, these are, like, milestone, like, really important pieces of tech, I think are a nice, like, healthy variety of some of the most important pieces of tech ever made. Very much so, yeah. Yeah. So we finished. We shot for, well, almost two months for those six weeks. Yeah. And now it's going into sort of the post phase and editing. But... I've mentioned in in the past, this is all coming out in December. So uh, Retro Tech Season 1 episodes will start coming out in in December, and that's that's pretty exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any favorite pieces of Retro Tech that aren't as old as the ones that we did? Aren't as old? I mean, yeah, even I've got a couple years on Marquez, and still everything that I saw we did was before my time. Actually, the only thing I can really think of is the Game Boy, which we can talk about because that that episode is out. If you haven't seen it, it's great. Uh, Check it out, but... Something that's important that, I mean, I'm, I'm big on gaming. My first game system personally was a PlayStation, the original PlayStation. Okay. Um, I did play, grow up playing a couple other ones. Uh, I remember the old Super Nintendo and playing Paperboy and that do, fun stuff. But Do you think more people started as gamers, as console gamers, or as PC gamers? Because I feel like as a kid, you start to get into console gaming first. I think console gaming's that, like easier way of oh my parents know i like playing video games so <laughs> yeah. they don't go like they don't know what to do yeah, so yeah they, they just get a game in walmart and exactly the console. Uh, yeah. i mean like and honestly when i remember when xbox first came out i wasn't even that excited about it and my mom who's incredible got me one for christmas heard that there was this game called halo i'd never okay. heard of it i've been a first person shooter gamer since so that's, that's happened formative years yeah yeah pretty much my mom chose my genre of gaming that i like so much which is interesting but it's different yeah pc i have heard a lot of people get into pc gaming young usually that's from it's been around longer so usually that's from a parent who gamed on their pc yeah um i'm sure everyone knows shroud shroud's dad apparently was a played counter-strike a lot so he started playing counter-strike early now he's like a counter-strike savant that's that's another thing you got to keep me in touch with because we talk about youtube and and videos all the time but Mm -hmm. streaming Mm -hmm. and twitch and mixer and all these other things that are happening in the streaming world that i also don't follow as much i mean the fact that you just said mixer out loud is Mm -hmm. something that's been in the news recently we all know ninja just went to mixer right that's all i know yep Uh, so the fact like that just proves that all these people are saying oh ninja made a bunch of money moving to mixer well Marquez just said Mixer out loud. Yeah. That's why they paid him. Because people who don't know the streaming platform saw that news. Now they know Mixer's a yeah, thing. It exists. Or, yeah, it exists pretty much. And so they did exactly what they were looking for. Yeah. I will say I was in the green room of a shoot that uh, you'll see what show I was a part of very soon. But that's like half of what we talked about was Tesla for a while mm-hmm. and Mixer and Ninja and what that meant for media for a little bit. It's yeah. a fascinating conversation but yeah you'll have to keep me up to date on will do will do. on that okay uh one other little piece of news that i kind of sort of hinted at earlier that i loved is first of all tesla we talk about a ton yep. on this so i have a tesla i've been driving one for a while brandon we got to get him on an episode coming up soon but he drives a model three mm-hmm. um plenty of friends with teslas in the area uh, we just naturally talk about the company a lot. I think ever since we interviewed Elon, that was kind of like a <laughs> popular topic. Yeah, naturally. definitely. Um, and and something they're they're constantly ahead with is supercharging. And if you're a, if you're in the tri-state area, you've probably heard of Wawa. If you're, if you're in the northeast, if you haven't, you need to. Oh yeah, that's yeah. it's popular, and uh, a lot of them have Tesla superchargers specifically at them. Actually, the one closest to our studio here in New mm-hmm. Jersey is a Tesla supercharger in a Wawa parking lot. 
And so one piece of news we'll try to include in the show notes if we can, like the links to the exact articles you talk about. But in New Jersey and Philly area, they're doubling down and adding, I think they said they're doubling. I think doubling. I think there's around 16 Wawa's right now with superchargers, which doesn't sound like that much. Wawa is everywhere. Yeah. But doubling's awesome. Uh, Wawa's also around down in Florida, surprisingly. It kind of hits this like New Jersey to Delaware area huh. and then just skips all the way down to Florida. But And for those unfamiliar, a lot of Wawa's have gas stations yes right now so, yeah all the new ones now, yeah probably. so people so if you're at a wawa and there's a gas station right there they'll also put superchargers sort of tucked away in the corner of the parking lot mm-hmm. but i just love seeing new superchargers get built it's sort of a constant reminder that they're moving forward with it yeah it's awesome. and it's cool just seeing a company coming out and saying hey we want to double this we want to increase it i mean it's probably great for their business also because yeah, no that doubt. you're sitting there for an hour and they sell food so why not go in and grab a hoagie uh Hell yeah <laughs> i don't know if everyone knows what a hoagie is i think that's a oh, pretty regional a term names. but there's a bunch of names sub hero you're gonna start to get our lingo as we do this podcast more often of words we say that you might not have heard but yeah i think hoagie is one of them hoagie is like a submarine sandwich yeah. if that's even what you call it but yeah Word. a sandwich on top of news we ourselves we watch a lot of content online. I a think lot. it's safe to say that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know Marquez does because every time I ask him if he's seen a new TV show, he has <laughs> no idea what I'm talking Here's about. Here's the thing. I have a Netflix account. I have not logged in in months. I don't watch <laughs> Hulu. I, I, I have TV, but like I really only watch live sports. I hope you're at least letting people in your family uh, take oh, yeah, your Netflix use, account. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, I have an account. I just, uh, I, I watch a lot of on-demand content and that's YouTube for me. So mm-hmm. I watch tons and tons of YouTube. So I think what we're getting at is another awesome segment to regularly have on this podcast would be like, you know, what we've seen and enjoyed in YouTube yeah. in the past little bit. Videos that really stood out. Um, I, Phil DeFranco does something very similar to this. He goes through a lot of things. I think we're going to pick one or two maybe a week yeah. or every other podcast and uh, talk about it. Today's it. is probably not anything you'd be expecting. Okay. And I'm almost positive you have not seen it because you just flew in. Okay. Um, and sat straight down here. So I'm we ready. all know Simone Yurtz, I believe is how yeah. you pronounce her last name. Yes. Um, shitty robot girl. Love I it. hope people still call her that, or I, I feel really offensive saying that. No, but that's her okay, channel. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, she just made a video where she got a chance to fly out to New Zealand and work with the people who did all the costume design for Lord of the Rings. Ooh. So that's pretty cool. They asked, they told her, we will build you a costume, any costume you want. And, you know, they're the Lord of the Rings costume designers. They're going to create something incredible. So her idea was a business mantis shrimp. A business mantis shrimp costume professionally made. So I'm imagining... Do you know what a mantis shrimp is? I think I know what a mantis shrimp is, but... If you don't know what a mantis shrimp is, you have to look up a video on it because they're the most fascinating creatures in the world. (laughs) Don't think of like a shrimp you eat like in a shrimp cocktail. Think of... A tad bigger. Think of the most insane colors you ever think of the Galaxy Note tens back right now. Oh. That's basically the colors this thing is feeding off and it's violent. Like the shrimp. It is a nasty little creature. Okay. Um it essentially has these little it has claws or it has these little like pummeling balls, they call it, that to hit snails for it to eat. Essentially it can create so much force punching these snails that it creates a vacuum in the water (laughs) that like superheats the water when it's hitting these things it's incredible oh my god it is also a super fascinating looking animal i need to look crustacean i don't know yeah Yeah. um wait let me pull one up oh wow so i'm looking at a mantis shrimp right now it's kind of it looks like a an insect underwater it is it is exactly that aura glow note 10 color (laughs) and it's a it's not a friendly looking crustacean either. It's wow. poised. It is standing upright, arched back, and ready to mess your day up if so you're she a snail. Gets, she gets a costume that looks like she this, gets, like full size. It's it's incredible. I can't even describe how good it is, how much I was laughing and still bewildered at the end of it. <laughs> of like huh. it's basically the arms and the head features of this with uh like an old crusty suit like a like 70s lawyer would wear or something like that or that's awesome it's incredible okay. um, it's about 20 minutes long but the video is it's so good i will have to check it out this is part of why we're going to do this is like 
either Andrew will share a video with me or I'll share a video with Andrew. Mm -hmm. We'll pass back and forth. And, you know, if you guys have good stuff that you want us to share that you don't think we've seen, definitely pass it our way. The Waveform Twitter is always open. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of uh, Aura Glow, I think that, that jumps us right into our big topic. Mm -hmm. Samsung Galaxy Note 10. Um, is this the death of the headphone jack? Is this it? I, it's hard to say no. <laughs> I mean, like, after it, Samsung's kind of our was our savior for so long. They were the, the no compromises, what you called the Note 9. What's the phrase? You either, you either, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become... Yeah, the villain. Well, that's that's where we're at with Samsung right now. They've it dropped their first like flagship without a headphone jack. So now that we've declared that Samsung is the villain, yeah, uh, you did a poll recently on Twitter just about the headphone jack that yeah. I I thought was pretty interesting. Do you want to share the results of that? Yeah. How about we uh we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk all about headphone jack and Galaxy Note 10. Sounds good. All right. These days, a lot of workplaces offer some pretty nice perks, a snack and a coffee station, multiple flavors of barely flavored soda water, even insurance. So while a handful of trail mix is nice, even if your coworker Matt picked all the M&Ms out of it, it's not enough to subsist on, and neither is your workplace life insurance. So this is where Policy Genius comes in. Policy Genius is an easy way to shop for life insurance for you. So let the Policy Genius team look at your workplace life insurance and help you decide what else you might need, and what you don't. Get quotes from top insurers to make sure you have the right amount of coverage for the best possible price. And the team can also help you find the right home, auto, and disability insurance. So remember, workplace life insurance policies are like workplace snacks, better than nothing, but not quite enough. So head to policygenius.com today to find out how to supplement your workplace life insurance and better protect your family. Policy Genius. It's like a buffet made of life insurance and what could be more delicious than that so if you're selling online shipping orders can be a real pain in the neck it's time consuming it can be expensive and stressful just trying to choose which carrier to use that's why you need shipstation.com the fastest easiest and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders yeah yeah when we clean out our product cabin every few months we wind up selling quite a few of our outdated pieces of tech shipstations made it way less stressful to make sure I'm not spending a fortune on Marquez's company card. Yeah, ShipStation works with all the major carriers like UPS, FedEx, USPS, so you can quickly figure out the best shipping solution for you and your customer. Any business can even access discounts that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies so you know you're always getting the best deal. And right now, Waveform listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use promo code WAVE. That's W-A-V-E. Absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering your credit card info. I wish more places offered that. So just type ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in WAVE. That's ShipStation.com and promo code W-A-V-E. ShipStation.com. Make ship happen. Okay, we're back. So, Samsung Galaxy Note 10. A lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings. Um, I was uh, generally pretty positive. I had about an hour to play with it mm -hmm. for uh, my first impressions. Shot a lot of footage, so of course that took a lot of my attention. But generally, Galaxy Note 10 got a lot of attention. The main thing that I think we're just sort of still lingering on yep. is the lack of a headphone jack in a Samsung flagship. I think a lot of people thought they might have waited till the S11 to drop it. That's what I would have guessed if they were going to. Yeah, yeah but they, they ended up doing it pretty quickly here. Uh, first of all, are you a headphone jack guy or nah? Uh, <laughs> not really anymore. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have Bluetooth in my car. Uh, so right. I've been get I got used to that. I surprisingly don't put headphones in that often. True. Um, it's strange. Now with like Google Home all over my house, I'd rather just blast it until Claire yells at me to turn it off, <laughs> and then uh. I don't listen to headphones too much more. I barely run either, so maybe that's a big reason. But so I did. A, I did a poll on Twitter. Uh, it was a twenty-four hour poll, mm -hmm. and it was just. A, I had a sort of a theory on the headphone jack, and I wanted to see if how far off I was because I feel like in this tech world we might be in a little bit of a bubble sometimes about mm -hmm. things like headphone jacks. But I tested it. I said, "How much does a headphone jack weigh into your next smartphone buying decision?" Mm -hmm. and I tried to give sort of a positive, neutral, and negative. Yeah. Can I take a quick? I haven't seen the. I voted and I saw the results like right when you posted it. But oh, okay. just yeah. So 
I feel like your poll, like you said, we're in this bubble. Mm-hmm. Your poll is not going to show what the average consumer thinks. Let's, I think we all can agree on that. That doesn't mean yes. it should, something should take away. I would assume that the poll is going to be very pissed off that the headphone jack is gone. It, it was actually sort of surprising. So the top option of none, I don't care, I already lost a headphone jack, mm-hmm. versus it would be a nice bonus, like sort of a meh in the yeah. middle, uh, versus I 100% need a phone with the jack. Mm-hmm. The winner was, I don't care, I already lost the jack at 40%. That's interesting. But then right in the middle at 36% was, meh, would be a nice bonus. And then pulling up the rear at 24% was, I need the headphone jack. So the smallest amount of people Mm -hmm. need the headphone jack, and the most amount of people are over it. My my theory at the beginning of this was, the headphone jack dying is is becoming a meme. Okay. Kind of yeah. like, you know, you know how everyone disliked YouTube Rewind, even if they didn't actually hate the video? Like, it was bad. Yeah, it was pretty But, bad. like, <laughs> people decided to become, a, it became a meme that this would be the most disliked video, uh-huh. and we just hopped on board and disliked it. I feel like, lately, I've sort of observed everyone just gut reaction. Whenever you see a phone that's a 1000 bucks, you have to say it's too expensive. Mm-hmm. Whenever you see a phone with no headphone jack, you have to say, I'm not buying this because it doesn't have a headphone jack. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the gut reaction. And I was just curious if that was actually true or not. It seems to me, you're right, it's not a sample of the world. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it might actually it might actually sway it a little bit both ways. In this tech enthusiastic yeah, audience, yeah. there's a lot of people who have these specialty needs who are really nerdy or into you know creativity or just need a headphone jack for certain applications. Mm-hmm. You DJ off of your phone, you, you edit video off your phone, you just, if you're an audiophile, you have a separate DAC, all these things. These are people in a small group yeah. that are a vocal minority. But the group of people who are really into tech who have gone totally wireless is also present in our audience. Sure. We're like, I went wireless five years ago when mm-hmm. Apple started to rip the Band-Aid off and get rid of it in the first place. So... I don't know. I feel like, uh, what do you think? Is the headphone jack sort of overrated at this point? I don't know about overrated. I mean, like, so we definitely, there's a couple things you just touched on. There's audiophiles out there. Yeah. We still have LG. We're assuming LG's probably going to have. Yeah, like, LG has a DAC. I know we don't mention it much. I think it's a small portion of people who are really that big of an audiophile that they want the DAC. Right. And LG's there for you, and it's, it's nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So... I, if they take away the headphone jack, they're really going to piss some very loyal people off because right. they have a very loyal fan base for that. It's almost like the headphone jack with LG is going to start to become that niche feature that they hang on to that keeps that small market share. Like, what? what's another similar thing? Because uh, oh, cameras, everyone loves cameras. I mean, if I you want to go really that. niche, the Note 10, it has an S Pen. The S Pen, sure. So that's another thing, like, not a lot of people need or no. want an S Pen today. Uh-huh. But it's not like the thing is, it's we were never in an age where everyone had a stylus mm-hmm. and now everyone's getting rid of it. So it's, it's this weird, it's this weird thing. We're, we're sort of moving on from it. But people who are, quote, lagging behind always have their reasons. But yeah, yeah. What, one thing I find really interesting with Samsung ditching the headphone jack is we've even people who have like Bluetooth headphones and are ready for that wireless thing. You hop in a car, it might not even be your car, it might be an Uber, it might be your friend's car, they have an aux cord. Always. What do I, I don't have my headphone jack anymore. I feel like that's the biggest <laughs> point into where losing headphone jacks sucks. I get offered the aux cord in the Uber all the time. Yeah. I've tweeted it before. Yeah, that's that's a that's a thing. But then what I find interesting is Note 10's not giving you a dongle either. Or only USB C headphones. So like right. Yeah. Yeah, I, only USB C headphones in the box, no dongle included in the box. I know a lot of guys switching to no headphone jack or at least including that dongle yeah pixel 3 did at least so the the note is in a sort of a an interesting place and that kind of brings us to the rest of the note because there's a a sort of a feeling about the galaxy note that it's it's less of a power user's phone but here's my stance on the note Mm because there's the note 10 and the note 10 plus yep and i didn't have enough time to really talk through all of this in the video this is perfect for the podcast Mm -hmm. instead of seeing it as a note 10 and a Note 10 Plus, yep. like a normal phone and a big phone, it really, really is, to me, the Note 10 Plus is the next Note, yep. and the Note 10 is an additional Note that's smaller. Mm-hmm. So it's like a Note 10 and a Note 10 Minus, or light. Yeah, or there, there was a Reddit, a really good Reddit, art, not article, uh, comment calling it the Note 10 and the Note 10 E, yeah, yeah, which you yeah. would hope, though, the Note 10 E would be a bit cheaper, but that's <laughs> what it feels like. It feels like the... 
Yeah. I mean, it's a knockdown in price, not by a ton, but it's 950 bucks. It's a 1080p screen. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not. It doesn't have expandable storage. It has less RAM. It has all these things that are just a little bit knocking it down. But the size is really what they're doing. Is they're they're offering a note to people who are, I don't know if intimidated is the right word, but they didn't really want that gigantic phone. Yeah. The the only problem I see with that is like there are power users who want that version of a smaller phone too. So it's really unfortunate that. Let's give you all the specs in the big one, but if you want the small one, you're going to lose. And, and you're not just losing one or two things. Yeah, there is a big difference between the specs they have in the plus and the specs they have in the regular. Yeah, your RAM, which I don't know if you'll notice the difference between eight or twelve gigs, but that is thirty three percent more RAM, right? Mm-hmm. That's a good amount of of RAM. Your storage can go from two fifty six to five twelve, so double your storage on and the big one. Expandable, you expandable, don't get expandable with the uh, micro SD. And here's the thing is when you go to one of these Samsung briefings, and and I don't really talk about this much in the videos, so I guess this is also great for the podcast. When you go to these briefings, you're you're sort of given a presentation by Samsung, mm-hmm. and it's up to you to, to parse that information and share it the way you want. So they'll tell you, hey, no headphone jack, but we're doing this because we wanted to include a larger battery. And I hear that, and I'm like, well, Samsung is already just taking the, the wind out of the no headphone jack articles by saying bigger battery yep but to me like this phone has a giant pen in the side of it like all the way down the side like they could have included a a headphone jack and had a slightly smaller battery and that would have been okay um but they they sort of choose how to present to you all this information so i think one of the things was um 90 something percent of note users they figured would be okay with that amount of storage because they didn't have that much stuff on their phone like half a half a terabyte was enough which is probably true yeah. Um, but for those people who needed expandable storage, the, the Note 10 Plus is the only way to go. It's a tough one. It seems the price difference is only, what, about 150 bucks. 150 for the yeah. For the base of the, for the base Note, Note 10 Plus. versus 10 Plus. It seems like a hard sell to go Note 10. Right, because at that smaller phone, for 950 bucks, you also have the S10 Plus sitting right there, which is lower. It's cheaper now. Yeah. So you're, you're probably going to be swayed to the cheaper phone. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to have S11 come out at probably around the same size. Uh, it is a tough sell. But a tough sell. when I played with it, this is always what happens. Like uh-huh. the one that's like tough to convince you to buy, you actually use it. And it's like a really nice experience. Like I could actually reach the corner of the screen. And yeah. it, was a, it was sort of a comfortable, pocketable size. You have a way bigger screen in a body the size of the S10. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a really comfortable phone to use. But yeah, as far as people who are sort of spec peeping and and checking what's what you're getting on paper that is a tough sell it's a it's an interesting choice i think something that's also interesting you see all these people on i read reddit a lot our android we read you all the time Mm -hmm. we know some of you like us we know some of you really don't like us hi our android yeah what's going on (laughs) um but the s pen yeah do people use the s pen and I think we sent out, or we must have said it in last year's video or something, wondering if people used S Pen, and we got a lot of feedback. Well, you had a note for a couple months. There. I had a note eight for a little bit. I liked it how a much, lot. Uh, how, how much, much S Pen were you S-Pen? doing? Uh, grocery list. That's about it. Uh, okay. Or when Snapchat was popular, it was it was fun oh, drawing on drawing people. Drawing on things. Uh, yeah. I'm a terrible artist, so. But finger painting versus a stylus, yes, that's an much advantage. Much different. Much different. Did you get any props for like your quality artwork? No. Like, no? I was too embarrassed <laughs> to send it to anybody. So. That's hilarious. Okay, yeah. I No, I'm not a big S Pen user. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's screen off memos. Okay, yeah, So yeah. I didn't use, like I, I take notes already in Google Keep, but if mm-hmm. I wanted to like take a quick note or write a phone number down or something, quick i would just take the s pen out write it down and then at the end of like every couple days i just check samsung notes and Mm -hmm. have my screen off memos and then just transfer them to google keep yeah um other than that i don't really draw on things i i mostly sign documents on my mac or my ipad or something like that so Mm -hmm. not a huge one for me but there are groups of people out there who love that yeah we we got a bunch of emails and some tweets about people who do things uh like landscaping or plumbing or or construction and stuff like that where for them it's a really easy way to take a picture in real time pull it up in front of their client and draw on it right what they want to show the client yeah that, that's awesome so there's I really mean, uses for it i mean there's there's always going to be that uh that small group that's that's going to cling to it the tightest but my <laughs> my favorite feature of the note 10 mm-hmm. we've, we've talked about you know there's design and there's uh the specs are all high-end snapdragon 855 the ram 
the design. The display is beautiful, but it's only 60 hertz, only in air quotes. But my yeah. favorite feature is honestly that Aura Glow color. Oh, yeah? And I say color, but it's like seven different colors, mm-hmm. depending on how you look at it. Now, this is going to be an impossible phone to shoot a video of. Pretty much. I yeah, hate I'm not, I'm not how hard this to. is going to be to make a video of because it's just a mirror. It's Reflection City. Um, but, wow, that's a crazy looking It's really cool. Phone. It's one of the coolest features that you will cover within 10 minutes of purchasing Instantly. the phone. Oh, but yeah. That's another thing. Like, colors, phone manufacturers are making some really cool colors. Yeah. Except it's going to get covered by a case almost immediately. That's so something it, else I need to pull. I need to figure out how many people really put a case on their phone. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a lot higher than I think it is. But Yeah, I, th- I think it is. But is it clear cases? Are people just putting... There like, are clear... Clear cases are becoming a big thing, and you see a lot of phone manufacturers putting clear cases in the box now because yeah. they're making these awesome colors. I think colors, it's mostly marketing. This yeah. this looks awesome. This is going to look awesome in a commercial. You're never going to see it when you have it, but it's going to make you think about the phone. Yeah. All right, so Note 10, I feel like we're going to have a lot of a lot of opportunities to talk about it in later episodes, especially after we review it and mm-hmm. get it in our hands for longer. But from that hour we played with it, it was pretty sweet. But we all know what's coming. And what's coming up is <laughs> smartphone season, is what I like to call it, is uh, the beginning of the madness of all these companies dropping their hottest tracks. And by yeah. tracks, I mean products mm-hmm. um, for the holiday season. We get Techtober is what we call it. That's where a Sectober, lot of them end up being. Yeah. Uh, September, we end up getting, we're going to have, how about I just go through the list right now? So coming up for the rest of this year, Note 10, Note 10 Plus, iPhone 11, I guess that's what, what they it's call called. it, yeah, or XI. <laughs> iPhone um, 10 or 11, XI and then iPhone XI Plus. Let's just call it 11. Yeah, uh, let's iPhone call 11 and 11 11's Plus. Uh, we're going to get that ROG Phone 2. we got to talk about that for a little bit. Definitely. We're going to get Pixel 4 and probably a Pixel 4 XL. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a lot of other stuff in between. Maybe a OnePlus phone, depending Possibly. on if they keep their schedule up. So V. The next V series, probably LG as well. They're usually like right after. Yeah, Pixel. they kind of tweak their their lineup a lot with the, okay. the beginning of this year with the V50. But mm-hmm. we're gonna have a lot of phones coming up for the second half of this year. So we're gonna take a quick break, and then after this, we'll talk about every single phone we have thoughts about coming up for the rest of 2019. Listening makes us smarter, more connected people. In fact, you're listening to a podcast right now. It's safe to say you probably commute more often than we release a new podcast, so why not find another solution to your long commute every morning? Audible. So my free time is usually spent writing and coming up with the next video for the channel, but with the North Jersey traffic, I decided to start listening to some audiobooks to make my commute more productive. So of course I gravitated towards the Elon Musk audiobook, since you could say, I'm a bit of a Tesla fan, so I spent the next few weeks learning about Tesla in my Tesla, very meta, and then we went to interview him shortly after, so it was perfect. So Audible delivers audiobooks from every genre you could ever imagine, all professionally narrated in a convenient app that lets you pick up right where you left off. You know how you know they're legit? The app is available on iOS, Android, and even Windows Phone. So Audible members can choose three titles every month, one audiobook plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. So start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals for free. Visit audible.com slash waveform or text waveform to 500-500. Again, even for you Windows Phone users out there, you can get your free trial of Audible by visiting audible.com slash w-a-v-e-f-o-r-m or texting waveform to 500-500. All right, we're back. So smartphone season, we got to cover all the phones coming up for the rest of 2019. Uh, first of all, we have Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. We sort of talked about it already, but they're in sort of an interesting place. 950 bucks for the Note 10, 1100 bucks for the Note 10 Plus. Um, but obviously, we've seen them now. We have our impressions. The rest of these are going to be purely based off rumors and speculation. Yeah. Um, iPhone 11, what are you into? What have you seen so far? Let's see. I feel like... The only big rumor right now about the 2019 iPhone 11 is the triple camera. Yeah, pretty That's much. what we're all seeing. That's it's, what we're all talking we're about. We're going to yeah. get, so we're going to get some sort of a new chipset. I guess we'll call it A13 for now. Um, there are rumors about reverse wireless charging, mm-hmm. which was also quietly added to the Note 10 and 10 Plus. 
uh, but for also charging your AirPods, which will be pretty cool. Which will be nice because you don't have air power. So, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you just get your little wireless charging pad with your phone. <laughs> Um, and also having three models of the iPhone. Again, very similar design except for that triple camera, but iPhone 11, 11R, and 11 Max is, I guess, what we'll call them. Yeah, yeah. But the triple camera is what people are focused on. No pun intended. Yeah, it's it's exciting. It's yeah. cool. It looks pretty bad. I mean, yeah. it, it's different. So we're used to a super clean Apple look. Everyone hated the double camera at first, too. So it looks rough. The funny thing is there are so many other triple cameras Mm -hmm. out right now that look, you know, more or less fine. Like the the OnePlus 7 Pro, you know, we look at this like little vertical layout. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's not like we're looking at the back of our phones all that much. But then you have Mate 30 Pro. Mate 30 Pro has a little alien look, but it's a little little smaller and it's in the center. So, you know, it's fine. We get uh, the Note 10 that just came out, triple cameras. It's fine. Uh, So this sort of... Well, Pixel 4 is also going to have it, but this sort of off-to-the-side giant block. array, of yeah. this block of, like, weird look. It's like, and also, it's it's not quite evenly, it's not on the four corners. Well, so what the, looks weird array. is that the triangle camera array might not look that weird, except then you just throw this flash right on top of it, which that's just what makes is, it weird. yeah, that's what makes it weird. Yeah. It does seem, though, like the reason it's in a triangle is to be equidistant apart, which right. I'm sure has something to do with depth sensing right so i'm sure there's a reason behind it yeah there's a whole uh diagram already as google continues to intentionally leak parts of the pixel 4 (laughs) of all the sensors in the front of the pixel 4 which include i think radar was one of them like a whole bunch of strange sensors but they're intending to do some ar stuff um with depth sensing with that front camera array face unlock things like that maybe even gestures with your hand um but uh yeah that that whole back array will also be probably used a lot for some vr and ar stuff yeah definitely for sure so that's pretty much it for you know 2019 iphone rumors again design looking pretty similar i guess if it ain't broke don't fix it i did a video on the models that we got of the iphone but that doesn't mean we don't have fun talking about 2020 iphone oh yeah or 2021 iphone when they finally start to make a little bit of a bigger change yes my favorite easily is pro motion display yes easily when are they going to do either a 90 or i guess they should just go all in and do 120 hertz oled on mm-hmm. the iphone god that would be great ipad pro looks so good yeah that needs to be in a phone it it's just incredible. needs to yeah so yeah there's already that rg phone too which we'll hit in a second that has 120 hertz oled mm-hmm. so we know it's physically possible and apple's never a first mover they have what's called a second mover advantage where mm-hmm. they'll they'll work on a or they'll wait for sort of technologies to mature before they implement them but i would really like a 120 hertz display in the please, iphone please please uh high refresh rate's been something that uh pc gamers have had for a long time and kind of hoarded to themselves and it's really fun to to see it hit the the consumer market yeah and first of all thank you razor for being the the first phone that i know of to throw that out there yeah it was the screen may have not been the best screen in the world, but it was hard to go back to a regular phone after that. If we can, if we can give the iPhone props for moving the headphone jack, if we can <laughs> give the Note props for making phones bigger, if we can give that that one random sharp Aquos phone props for thinning bezels out, oh. we can give the Razer phone props for starting a trend of higher refresh rates. And I'm super, I'm here for that. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait till every phone has this. I a lot of regular consumers are not going to notice the difference until you. They have it in their hand. Maybe not even at first, but when they go back to something else, they're going that's to be like, when it gets what you. is happening? That's right when now. it gets you. And that's yeah. why I'm so into the iPad. So, like, I've been using, as I've said in sort of tweets and videos, the iPad Pro with 120 hertz display mm-hmm. all the time as my main, like, computer. And at the same time, my OnePlus 7 Pro as my main phone with a 90 hertz display. So, in, this, in the back of my head, as I'm testing the Note 10... I'm like, this is a great phone. I know it has a Snapdragon 855. I know it's got 12 gigs of RAM. I know it's 1440p. It looks great, but it just feels a little bit stuttery. And maybe it's just my eye, because you guys know me. I, I look at 24 FPS video, and I think it looks choppy compared to 30. Sorry, Brandon. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've, sorry, had, we've accidentally had the camera rolling at 24. <laughs> it pops up on the top-down set, and he's like, well, what is this? What's going on? Yeah. Why is it 24? Turn it off. Um so I love me some higher refresh rate, um, but that that's yeah that's easily the most exciting thing for me with uh, with the new iPhone. Yeah, We're also the, expecting the 2020 iPhone and then the 2020 2021. Speaking of uh, what do you call it? Secondhand 
advancement. second mover advantage. Second mover advantage. Yeah. We, uh, possibly rumors of a folding iPhone. Yeah. Is that what we possible? want? Possible. I don't know. The, th- the funny thing is, is people have said, while it's a possibility, it seems more likely that it's a folding iPad that comes out first. Yeah. Which I think is I think cool. The thing about Apple is Apple, as incredibly massive and diverse as they are as a company, mm-hmm. they're a, they're an iPhone company. Yeah. Like they, they, they sell the iPhone to the world and everything else sort of comes after that. Um, and that's just a simple way of saying like, going with a folding phone like dramatic drastically changing the iphone design like that i mm-hmm. i feel like they would have to either make it a new line of product or like bring it down from the ipad or something like that so there could be an iphone and then also a folding phone that they call yeah. something else the folding you iPhone. don't think it would have an iphone name like yeah, maybe we yeah, have yeah. galaxy fold yeah yeah whereas, maybe iphone okay. fold or whatever like it's a separate thing but mm-hmm. i feel like yeah they're they're gonna keep that slab going as long as they oh, can oh yeah, yeah i don't think sure. they'll ever get rid of the right. regular iphone it's iconic yeah they're, the folding they're phone company. wouldn't be the only iphone mm-hmm. yeah yeah for sure uh yeah no i i do miss the galaxy fold and i i think folding phones have a a place in our future in some time as that tech gets yeah. better but we've we saw that uh that royal flex buy that that thing is a mess so. yeah I, I don't know if 2021 is when it's going to come out because apple is probably not going to come out with it until someone has it down and then they're going to perfect it yeah that's yeah. just gonna happen. So that's just gonna happen with Apple. Um, why don't we do Pixel Four? Yeah, let's I do know Pixel. Pixel Four has a. Oh man, it's playing with my emotions right now. These rumors about the Pixel Four. So I don't know if you've seen the latest batch of rumors. Um, it's even hard because I wrote some of this last night, and I've already changed some of it this morning. Oh my god! So it's let's all over see. the place. Yeah. So okay, the latest that I've seen. So Pixel Four we've seen is gonna have, as Google starts to like tease this on their own, it's gonna have the corner triple cameras yep it's gonna have uh no, a not, bit of... i thought it was double cameras oh yeah so possibly dual well, that's i believe it's only know. dual cameras so possibly dual cameras and then a third sort of depth sensor and then mm-hmm. a flash but that same design that they've shared um it's gonna have a, a bit of a forehead it's not gonna have a notch but it's gonna have some bezel going on uh and it's gonna have uh of course stock android it's gonna have the squeeze it's gonna be similar to the pixel 3 and 3xl but then on top of that the rumor that's, you know, kind of eating away at me right now that I don't think is true, but I really oh, want I, to I already true. have the answer for you. I know what you're going to say, so <sighs> go on. The 90 hertz display Never mind. Never mind. and oh. the DSLR attachment. That's okay. I have I have <laughs> some answers for you. Really? And you're not going to like that. Okay. Well, Sorry. let me just say for a second, the specs I am, I, I'm like okay with. Like the Pixel has not been a spec king for a while. It's got... Uh, you know, not that much RAM. Four gigs in the past. They said they're going to be six gigs now. You know, still not a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you can get away with that if it's really well optimized, like, say, the iPhone is. But Pixel's sort of had memory issues. So that's, you know, eh, a little bit middle of the road. But 90 hertz OLED display, I would absolutely love. But the rumor is also slightly smaller batteries, 2,800 Yeah, those batteries, I was surprised with those. It's, it's also a big gap between... Yeah. So what are they saying? They're saying 2800 for the regular and 3700 right. for the XL? Yeah. Is it that much bigger? It needs almost 1000 more. I mean, it's I mean, when you look at the gap between Note 10 and Note 10 Plus, it's also a, what is it? A, a 900 milliamp hour difference, 3500 yeah, to 4300, so 800 milliamp hour difference. But yeah, I, 2800 is a small battery in 2019. Very small. And if you put a 90 hertz display on that smaller phone and that small of a battery, I'm already concerned. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Pixel, you know, it'll have wireless charging. It'll maybe be water resistant. It'll probably have pretty good speakers. 90 hertz display would be great. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, sort of middle of the road about that spec sheet. But then. Well, real quick before we get to attachment, if we're going to talk about cameras, we're seeing double cameras for the first time, which is exciting. Like, right? We've only had single cameras. But, hey, you're excited about this much it seems like it's going to be a regular and a telephoto which i'm not as excited about yeah i don't see why you would there's there's so little benefit to a telephoto lens Mm -hmm. especially on a phone like the pixel computational photography is their forte they to be fair they had this feature that they were trying uh i forgot what it was called but it was supposed to use digital zoom and then sort of use a gyroscope to measure how you move your hands to to improve sharpness on digital zoom um, so in theory, a 2X telephoto or 3X or something could help with that. But obviously, the ultra-wide would be the way to go, right? I'll take a wide any day. Yeah. 
that's uh that's a little weird to me that they wouldn't do that yeah portrait mode on the single camera on the three is so good already also really I'm, good i don't need a telephoto that's going to help me with the depth sensing or anything like that i'd much rather have a wide i don't want to i don't want to rant on it for too long because they yeah. might do the ultra wide but i figure when it does come out you'll hear from me you'll yeah hear from me but uh, what are you talking about with this? All right, this so let's go to DSLR. I believe lens. it was a couple days ago we heard about this DSLR attachment. Yeah. Um, kind of everyone's freaking out. Here's what Red tried to do, couldn't do, and now we're going to throw it on a camera that yep. that has a better camera already. Not true. Not true. There's a misquote, mis I guess. Okay. It is DSLR software enhancements. Oh. It's going to be a pro mode, basically. Oh, okay. Well, that's that was... Way off from yeah, what I was very, originally very reading. I was originally reading something along the lines of there will be an attachment that you can buy to give it better quality. That's, I that's, think that's what everyone was reading. That is not what's happening. Does not seem like it. I mean, right. I can't completely confirm that, but it's. let me just check. I mean, this doesn't shock me. We've seen attempts at modules on phones before. Motorola might be the only one I've actually seen do it somewhat successfully, and mm-hmm. they don't even have that great of a camera module. Um, I actually did a pretty harsh review on their Hasselblad <laughs> Moto Mod a little while ago. But, uh, yeah, Red has talked about doing one, hasn't done one. Uh, yeah, it's just, this isn't something I was crossing my fingers for or anything. Yeah, it, it was exciting. And then, uh, so it seems like uh, Stephen Hall from 9to5Google, uh, he said, Source reached out to me and said, I was not talking about physical hardware attachment. I was talking about a DSLR software feature for the camera app. Oh, okay. Yeah, big difference. Very All right. Big. So you know what? That sort of brings Pixel 4 down into phone I'm going to carry because I love the camera, but also get very disappointed with all the time because of specs. Pretty much. Well, that sort of leaves us with, I think, the last big one. Yeah. ROG Phone 2. This is kind of like the Dark Horse one, which shouldn't seem like a Dark Horse one when you purely just read the specs out because this is like dream phone category this, specs. That might be the most common thing people tweeted at me when mm-hmm. the spec sheet came out that dude they made your dream phone yeah and i didn't you know my dream phone was a little more nuanced there are some design things i would have wanted but holy hell the spec sheet is insane so let's just run down it real quick because it's a real phone it's not rumors anymore this is going to be no, coming yeah. out i'm going to be reviewing it this is they're going to make a matte black version they told me which i mean <laughs> geez asus what are you doing to me <laughs> uh, so it's an android phone similar design to the rog phone one it's going to have what's what's the size of the screen i forgot so 6.6 inch 1080p 120 hertz amoled display yeah that's right there that's yeah. already pretty sick i don't think anyone else is anywhere near that snapdragon 855 plus so uh, a little bit a little, little bit faster than the 855 but you're gonna have better gpu performance 12 gigs of ram up to half a terabyte of ufs 3.0 storage which is the super fast storage we've seen in a couple other phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Galaxy Fold. Love that. 6,000 milliamp hour battery. This is the one that a lot of people are like, well, what's going on here? Yeah. If you can fit a headphone jack and a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, it is a little bit chunky, um, but that's fine. Uh, this is a, does it have a headphone jack? It has a headphone jack. It does. Yeah. Re- this, it phone really is, does. this phone is top to bottom. Uh, it's killing the game. It's, it's absolutely killing the spec game. It should also have fast charging it should also have uh dual cameras it should also have a 24 megapixel front facing camera but really that that's the lineup that people were most into is the 120 hertz display the snapdragon 855 plus and 12 gigs of ram and your 6,000 million milliamp hour battery that that's uh rog phone 2 for you that thing could run crisis probably (laughs) (laughs) of all the phones i I would pick (laughs) that one yeah that's uh that's a lot going on now so who's gonna buy this phone because it's also like you would think putting all those specs in a phone would instantly make it the best phone. Uh, not necessarily true. There's a lot of people who care about cameras, and I don't think this is going to have the best camera. And Probably not. It'll be so easy to. It would be easy to tear down this phone and say it doesn't have a great camera. But like, mm-hmm. th- there's this is not for. I people don't think this is for tons people. Of photos. No, yeah. not at all. This is a literal gaming phone uh, for people who just want straight up the best performance yeah. and happens to be awesome in day to day use because of the display. This is going to be great. Yeah, I mean. Probably the only things you can really pick at it with are the camera, potentially, which for the majority of people is going to be totally fine. You're still going to be able to see what's going on. Yeah. If you're sharing where you are and stuff like that, it works. Yeah. And then design-wise, 
That's, it's uh, not quite. It's, it's, right. it's very RGB, very yeah. uh, PC gamer. Does it still have that glowing logo on the back? It I probably does. So, yeah, yeah, and has like fan attachments for it and stuff. Yeah, it, so it's a, it's for a certain type of uh, certain type of person that wants uh, all that yes. and more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're gonna get it with RG Phone Two, and it's already coming out also later this year. But I would say definitely stay tuned for the for the actual video for when I get in my hands because again they said to me they're making a matte black version for the final one when mm-hmm. it releases and well if I don't love that phone they must have done something horribly wrong in yeah the software I th- <laughs> well it seems like though software is rumored to be more like Zen Phone Six which was way closer to stock Android than right. the original ROG phone because original ROG was uh, we weren't the skin yeah, happening the skins were rough. Yeah. So it seems like Asus has heard people not liking that. Yeah. And I give them a ton of credit for probably doing a ton of work on their skin and then pulling back real hard. But people really liked it in the Zen Phone 6. So. Yeah. Bold move. Good response. Yeah. Good I think like Asus. ROG 2 is going to be the uh, Dark Horse flagship coming out amidst some pretty crazy ones. Right. All right. So smartphone season's coming up. You, of course, will be able to see videos about all these on the channel when they come out. So, of course, stay tuned for those reviews when they come out. But this has been a fun uh, fun little first discussion. And we'll yeah. get we'll get way deeper into, I think, some crazy topics in the next couple of weeks, especially as these devices actually start to come out. Um, but, yeah, that is, that's where we're at right now. we got to definitely have Brandon and Vin come in here because mm-hmm. they're in the studio. For those who don't know, Brandon and Vin also in the studio all the time, helping out with videos. Um, Andrew and I will be on the podcast all the time. And if you have suggestions for things to look at some videos to share some topics to talk through uh for the next episodes and we'll look through those on twitter and just send them our way yeah. i am watching yeah we're definitely open to suggestions this is our first dive into the podcast world so uh i'm sure there's going to be a lot of things in these first few episodes that don't seem perfect uh, i'm sure music's going to kind of be one of them like yeah hey if you if you make music and want to make something cool Ooh. hit us up an intro, it, maybe? It might, an intro, an ad break. Uh, Interesting. An outro, yeah. Yeah. Let and if you, have, if you have real feedback, of course, as well for for format or for anything like that for the podcast, we're also open to hearing that. So that's been episode one of Waveform in the books. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. There will also be some additional versions of this podcast coming soon, but we'll get more into that later as we dive into it. Thank you for listening. Wow, I'm usually saying for watching, but yeah. thank you for listening. It's different. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm Amanda Cerny. And I'm Summer Rae. And we want you to listen to our new podcast, Oh Honey. Honey. This is where our lovesick listeners write in their diary entries and we give our best advice. Oh Honey covers anything from catching your crush's attention to living your best single life. (laughs) And we have some very special guests that you don't want to miss. So make sure you download our Oh Honey podcast on Apple Podcasts. Or your favorite podcast app. Oh Honey. Oh Honey. Oh Honey. I want it! I want it!